So I've been given a life and I've been lucky most of the time. I don't want to feel ill all the time. I can garden, I've picked up my knitting and my sewing again. I plan for the garden, I'm, I'm, like last spring, I plan for late summer. Tried different plants, things I fancied growing. And now we've bought loads of bulbs, which we're trying to get into the ground and the pots for next spring. And I, I, I'm not thinking any further than that. I'll try and make it to snowdrop time. I'll try and make it to different flowers that are going to come in the garden. I'd like, like to see them again. So that's the way I look at it. Five years ago, 2018, um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So we, I, I had a lumpectomy and I had um, radiotherapy. Didn't want chemo because it hadn't spread that much. It hadn't spread throughout my body. And, and things were going okay until Last year, I think, it came back and that was really unpleasant because it was in the other breast and I had biopsies and it was horrible. Mammograms, I was backwards and forwards from hospital all the time. Um, they wanted to do a mastectomy and I, I knew years ago I didn't want that. It just isn't what I want. I was quite aware that I'd almost had five years and the prognosis had been five to ten. But I, I know what it would be for me if I had that done to me. I would feel, I think I'd have lost the will to live anyway. It, it just terrifies me. I was I had telephone conversations with consultants and the breast care nurses. And at the end of January, I had an appointment and that's when I told them I didn't want anything else doing. So from then on, it was palliative care. and. That's been really helpful. I was told about this place, the Bracken Trust, and Janet, the palliative care nurse, came to see me quite quickly. The breast care nurses at Hereford were amazing because they got the ball rolling. The consultants wanted it done quite quickly, and he was lovely. So since then, it's just been trying to keep as well as I can. I thought about the fact that it was terminal cancer, but I was on the positive side and, and five years can seem quite a long time. And it seemed perfectly all right to me to expect that. At my age, um, if I got five years, I'd be happy. Ten years would be amazing. Um, so I didn't think any more than that, to be honest. Um, I was more worried about how Graham would cope with my illness and not being there because we're very close. They have to put a needle in to drag tissues out. And it's horrendous. It's the worst thing I think that I've ever had. It was so painful. Um, core biopsy, I think that's what it's called. Um, and then I found another lump. The, the, the mammogram, nor the core biopsy had, had discovered. And that was a really bad one. So I was regularly going for, for mammograms and it, it never showed the bad one. It didn't show the first one, it didn't show the really bad one. So I thought, why am I putting myself through all this? So I've given it the best shot I could. And all it's doing is giving more pain and dragging Graham, having to see him drive in all these distances and the worry of, of looking after me, when at the end it's, I know it's going to get me in the end. Well, if the end's a bit closer, then so be it. I'm not, I don't want to be clinging onto straws because it's not going to cure me. The quality of life is far more important than the length as far as I'm concerned. I just felt so awful. I felt so ill that I didn't see the point. If, if, if this, the, um, the medication, the chemo that I was put on is something called a bemaciclib which are tablets um, which you have to take. And they're very toxic, you have to be careful handling them. I, had, I hadn't really realised that it was chemo, to be honest with you. Um, and it just made me so ill. It really did. 
I've, I've also signed, I don't want to be resuscitated. I don't want anything getting in the way of, of what I've decided. And Graeme has um, power of attorney over me as I have over him. And I've signed the, signed the relevant forms. If I, it, it's like um, I've got to the end of my shopping list. And I will just take, well, a month at a time, I suppose, I'm, I'm looking ahead because I'm not feeling too bad. The radiotherapy, which I had, this spring has helped a lot. It, I think it halted the tumour because it's not as painful. I can reach more things. I can put the washing on the line again. I can reach the tumble dryer. Things as simple as that. I can fold the sheets. I couldn't do that. So that radiotherapy seems to have been better for me. They've said I can have it again if I want to. And as long as I'm feeling okay, then I will carry on and hope we've got a bit longer. But I'm not, um, I'm not in panic mode at the moment, and I hope I, I'd like to keep away from that if I can. Who knows what happens at the end? You know, I might, I might end up saying, oh, give me this, give me that, but I, I don't think so. Once I've made my mind up, I usually stick to it. It's almost matter of fact, because something will occur in the garden or in the house, or we'll see something on the news, and we just say, well, if we're still here, it's just, you know, it's only one life. And there's so, so many awful things going on in the world. You know, I've, I'm 72 now, so that's not so bad. And I've had a good life, I've been very fortunate in many ways, and I've, and I've had sadnesses. Like I couldn't, it was really difficult to have a child, and then he was ill. It was lots of things, but people have, people's lives are full of tragedy. And if you've got some happiness as well, then I think you should focus on that. Well, that's what I do anyway. And the garden helps me with that. And the fact that Graham knows how I feel, my, my wishes and my philosophy in life, then, then we are comfortable with each other. We can sit and watch the telly. Um, no, it could be a hell of a lot worse. I mean, it might get worse, but at the moment, it's okay. If I'm feeling bad, even at times before I the cancer was the problem, but when John was ill, when, when he was having a bad time or I was feeling awful, if I go into the garden, there's always something there to make me smile and find something to do. I'd go into the shed, get the secateurs and my bucket, and that is good for you. And that sort of keeps me going. A, I don't want to be in a lot of pain. B, I don't want Graham to be too upset. And that, um, that he will ask for help and support afterwards and I think the people here will help him if I can keep, you know, he, he's joined the membership of the Bracken Trust the same as me and he always brings me here. He'll need someone to talk to. You see, we're, we're, we're like two sides of a coin. We've, we've been together for over 40 years. We've been through quite a lot and we're quite private people anyway. So it's going to be awful for him, as it would be awful for me. Whoever's left, it, it's, it's really sad. That bothers me. But he t tells me not to bother, he, he'll manage. He's far more practical than I am. I mean, I don't even drive, I'd be absolutely useless. Um, so he, he says that's a good thing. If he's there for me, then he says, I'll, I'll, I'll be with you sooner or later. People do say to me that I'm very calm about this. Now, I think a lot of that comes from me. I'm very much one of the, if it's, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Um, and you just have to get on with life. But I think the feeling of calm is helped by a place like this. That I feel that there's gonna be someone there for my family, i.e. my husband, when I'm gone. And some people don't have that, which I think is, is wrong. Not just sad, I think it's wrong. If you can't be, give people some dignity and some peace of mind. No, no, really, I, I, I'm not morose about it. I just, I'm not, I'm not even scared at the moment, as long as I, the pain's dealt with. And I think if you know that, you, you can face things. But it depends what you're leaving behind, doesn't it? You know, if you're leaving young children, a place like this is even more important. 
But of course you need to access all the help you can get and they know what they're doing. How do I want to be remembered? Um, that I was quite a nice person, really. I hope I haven't done too much harm in my life. So I'd like to have people have fond memories. That's a phrase people use. If, if people have got fond memories of me, well, that's nice. I don't want people to be sad because I've had a good life. So that's it. <laughs>